We're back at it, everybody. Another episode of the Cobra Daytona build. Almost got the drivetrain completed. So let me show you. Um, I finally got the bushings of these Delrin washers for the shocks. Um, they go between the uh, the screw collar and the spring, so that we can adjust a little bit easier. Uh, I finally got those in, uh, I think, Thursday. Uh, so I got those installed. The steering rack is now installed, uh, which I will have an episode up on that, as you can see. I actually smashed my finger pretty good, so we'll show that too. Um, tie rods aren't adjusted until I get some weight on it, figure out where these things need to be. But as you can see, the drivetrain is almost there. So there's one thing else I'm going to do. I'm going to install a drive shaft safety loop. Um, it's going to go into here. Let me show you how this is. Probably into about here somewhere. Uh, two reasons. One, I actually used to drag race a lot back when I was 17, 18 years old. I had a friend who had a 65 El Camino, um, and he was heading down the drag strip uh, just about at the end of the quarter mile, probably doing, you know, 100 miles an hour, give or take, back in the day. Uh, cars weren't like they are nowadays, where you can buy a, a minivan that'll do 100 miles an hour in the quarter mile. Uh, but I digress. Uh, his drive shaft decided to let loose, and I was the next up, so I was actually staged, ready to go, and you see this whole load of sparks from underneath the car. At the rear of the car, the El Camino actually lifted up in the air uh, like it was going to be pole vaulted. Came back down. He kept control. I went down to the far end because he obviously couldn't drive it, and there was a huge dent in his driver's door. Wasn't there when he started that run. So somehow the driver of drive shaft, which we found in the track uh, later, was actually down uh, a little bit past the end of the finish line. Um, bent up like a pretzel. Somehow that thing kicked out from underneath the car and hit the driver's door. I mean, it could have went through the windshield, it could have come up to the floor. So that's one of the reasons I'm going to do it. Even though with this drive shaft being so short, um, as you can see, I mean, here's my hand. That drive shaft is, you know, it's eight inches long, probably from yoke to yoke, if that, maybe seven. So the odds of it catapulting the car are slim to none. But here's the big thing. You're sitting right here. If this thing decides to come loose, um, you know, you're sitting right here. So that's why I'm going to run that loop, just because you're so close to the drive shaft. You know, if it was back there uh, towards the rear of the car, I wouldn't put one in. As I said, it's not going to pull vault this car. The drive shaft is so short. But being right next to you, I'm going to run a safety loop. Uh, I bought one of generic units at Summit. They can bolt in. Um, I keep going back and forth here. Sorry about that. You can actually bolt them in to the top of this rail here. I'm actually going to weld it in uh, because I don't want the bolts going through. I've seen guys that run nut certs in there, but... I don't want to drill a big old hole in that, you know, tube, that uh, square tubing. So I'm actually just going to weld it if I can get up there with the welder. So we'll kind of cut it all, get it ready to go. Worst case scenario, I bolt it from the bottom up. But hoping I can get a welder in there, and I think I should be able to. And uh, just get a couple good welds in there. Touched up with some paint, and uh, I think that'll do it. So we'll take you along the process here. But uh, drive shaft safety loop install. Hit subscribe if you want to see more, and we'll keep them coming at you. Thank you. Okay, so I cut that bracket to line it up to the frame. We'll go see how this fits. Okay, so this is gonna go into here like that. Hopefully you can see down in there. As I said, then I'll run a weld probably on that back edge underneath and on the top two little pieces a little bit. But I think that might have to come a little bit shorter. But uh, we'll play around with that. Okay, so I got the bracket cut. Um, let me take you underneath the car. I'll we'll show you what I've done so far. So hopefully you can see this. So I cut this bracket down. I'm going to weld it here, again on the other side, and then try to get up into here. That's going to be a little tough. Hopefully you saw that. Um, so I just got to get this other side done. Then I'll bolt this thing together, clean up these edges here, um, up into here, and then weld it in as a complete assembly. And uh, actually, then I probably don't have to unbolt it now that I think about it. So, but yeah, it looks like it's pretty centered. I'm as far forward of the drive shaft as I want to go. Uh, I got plenty of clearance, so nothing's going to rub. Um, so I think actually that's a pretty good spot. I mean, I could go a little further forward, cover the U-joints, but it's not going anywhere. That's going to protect it. It's going to keep it from really doing much of anything. Keep it within this confine. So get this other one done. And uh, I'll show you how, and then we'll do some welding. 
Okay, so the brackets, as you can see, are all done up. I had to ground these two ends because I wanted these to butt together. So that way this thing kind of narrow. Well, sorry about that. This thing narrows down this way. Um, and so I kind of ground down in between because the holes would not go. This said, this is generic. This thing was like 25 bucks at Summit. Uh, thick steel, but, and then this one will bolt up to here. And then we'll weld this into the frame so I can still unbolt these. Uh, but still drop the whole loop out if I ever pull a transmission. As I said, I'm always thinking ahead, trying to figure out, you know, what if I do this? Can I still get the assembly out of the car? So that's kind of the key. So uh, we'll go and get this thing bolted up, C-clamp down. We'll clean up the metal on the edges here, and then we will uh, tack it in. Then we can pull this back out so I can get up inside there, and we'll weld this thing in completely. And uh, it'll be another project done. And between the bell housing and drive shaft loop, full cage, this car should be pretty safe. I mean, you know, yeah, definitely not new car with airbags, but uh, safer than my Roadster ever was, that's for sure. That thing, those things are, um, yeah, there's no protection in those. So I did have drive shaft loop in that one though too though. So follow along. So we've got it mocked up now. Um, I think it looks pretty good, uh, ready to tack it in. So I gotta actually clean off some of the paint, but I'll show you what I got here. This is from the top view, so as you can see, um, just behind the front U-joint, uh, which is probably perfect. Uh, I try to want to get it over the U-joint, but it's just going to be too tight. So this should be plenty. This will keep it from going anywhere. Um, so we'll have to get down in there with the torch. As you can see, it's going to be a bugger. So I'll probably tack it from below and then come back in, disassemble this thing so I can get the torch down in here. And I'm going to have to kind of reach in kind of like this with the torch. Uh, and try to feed the rod in. It'd be nice if I had a MIG here, because then I could stick a MIG in there and just go crazy. But I don't. So we'll make do with what we've got. As I said, I should be able to get a little bit of it from down below, a lot of it from up top. But uh, as I said, it's all bolted in, looks good. So time to do some welding. So we've got the unit welded in, as you can see there. Um, I'm going to put a couple little small welds up top, but I've got both sides of this thing done. So I'm pretty well, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty well positive this thing's not going anywhere. So uh, yeah, and this way I've got no bolts coming through the bottom. I don't have nut certs or anything like that in there. It's just welded in. It's part of the chassis and going nowhere. Might even strengthen the chassis, but I doubt it. So thank you for watching another episode of the Drive Shaft Safety Loop Install. Uh, appreciate you watching. Uh, hit subscribe if you want to see more, and uh, there'll definitely be more coming at you. So thanks again, and uh, have a good one.